So this video is going to go over the basics of food chains and food webs, and that way tomorrow when you come into class, you will be able to spend the entire block period working on the uh, activity that you're going to be building your own food webs. So as you can see, a food chain simply illustrates the series of organisms as they gain energy from one another. And we have these things called trophic levels, which is essentially each step in our chain. So all, well I should say the vast majority of energy for living systems on this planet comes from the sun. Plants use that energy through photosynthesis, which we've discussed at length in the first semester. So our autotrophic organisms are our producers, and then the heterotrophs eat the autotrophs. And so in this example, you've got your base of the food chain being created by this producer, then we have these different trophic levels. This would be the first trophic level, second trophic level, and third trophic level. Sometimes they're called the primary consumer, secondary consumer, and then tertiary or third consumer. So the idea is the snake eats the mouse, which ate the grasshopper, which ultimately ate the producer. So then these are the steps that you will find, uh, you know, that you have to label on your study guide. In addition, you may want to add that you know, your plant, that's your producer. You might want to indicate that that's your autotroph. Whereas these three, they're all consumers. So you might want to kind of you know, do a bracket there saying that these guys these three guys are all consumers. You might want to label this is your autotroph. Whereas these three guys, these are your heterotrophs. Heterotrophs. Well, it turns out that in nature, food chains you know, really don't exist. It's not that simple. In reality, we end up having things called food webs that are much more accurate representations of what we see. And they're illustrated like in this picture you see here, or like you have on your study guide. Uh, much more complicated. You have lots of different organisms being eaten by one organism, and then maybe that organism is eaten by a whole series of organisms. So you get a complex network, which we call a food web, not a food chain. And there's aquatic food webs, there's terrestrial. Tomorrow in class, you'll be drawing, you'll be creating your own, either a terrestrial one or an aquatic one, using the, the rules and guidelines that I'll lay out for you. So these are two terms that we've been using a lot already in this video, consumer and producer. Our consumers are our heterotrophs, and our producers are our autotrophs that are making their own energy. There are two different ways in which they can do that. They can do it through photosynthesis, which we've talked about a lot, or chemosynthesis, which we haven't really talked about a whole lot. And so let's dive into those two and uh, let's explain what the difference between the two are. So photosynthesis, as we've gotten into details of first semester, is where things like plants can use the light energy of the sun to make glucose. So hence it's called photosynthesis, photo indicating light, synthesis indicating that we are synthesizing something. So plants are able to use this light energy to form, to make, sugar energy in the form of glucose. And then as a result, then they can feed themselves. They get their own sugar. They can make their own sugar to feed themselves. And also as a result, they now have the energy which fuels the rest of the food chains. So all the other organisms are going to be eating them directly and getting energy from them or eating the animal that ate that, that animal, etc. Okay? So when we say that you know, 99% of the life on this planet depends on the sun, that's why, because the light energy is being converted to sugar energy, and that sugar energy is used to fuel the things on this planet. So chemosynthesis, by contrast, it's still synthesis. We're still synthesizing glucose. However, we're not using photo. It's not light. It's chemo, which I want you to understand means chemical. So they're using chemicals, and it's mostly done by bacteria. So I want you to be thinking bacteria. You might want to even make a little note on your study guide that this is really carried out by bacteria. What these bacteria are doing is they're using chemicals that are present in the environment to synthesize glucose energy. And where we find this primarily is places on the planet where there's life, but there's no sunlight. So in caves, many caves, 
are actually powered ultimately by chemosynthesis. The energy comes from chemicals that are leaching through the rocks that some bacteria have the ability to make into glucose. And then those bacteria are like the plants. They're, they're like the bottom of the food chain. They're the producers. Same thing here. These two pictures are from the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. Clearly there's no sunlight down there. It's pitch black. And what you see are all these different life forms that ultimately are eating organisms or organisms that ate the bacteria that are the, the base of the food chain. They're the ones that are carrying out chemosynthesis. Of course, you couldn't have either of these two uh, food chains powered by photosynthesis because there's no light. So you have to use chemosynthesis. So that's the difference they need to know between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. For sure you need to know that. The last two uh, slides that I'm going to be talking to you about are the difference between a detritivore and a decomposer. Both of these creatures are eating, essentially, dead material and recycling it. So they're really important in, in an ecosystem. What the big difference, though, is that how they're doing it. A detritivore is an organism like what we're used to thinking about, like a vulture or even an earthworm, that are actually swallowing whole pieces of a dead carcass and then processing that, right? So you, you kind of easy to picture the vulture with an earthworm. It's a little bit, you know, more obscure, but imagine what the, gold, the earthworm is doing as it's going through the earth is it's gobbling up the dirt, and in the dirt there's all kinds of small particles of roots and, you know, decomposing pieces of debris, leaf matter, things like that, and the, and the earthworm is eating that, so it's swallowing it like we would swallow something, and it's, and it's decomposing it. Whereas decomposers do uh, the same kind of system, but totally differently. So they are going to be breaking down dead organic matter, but they're doing it in a very different way. Things like mushrooms or fungi, uh, what they're doing is essentially they are secreting enzymes into the environment, like into the soil. The enzymes are digesting the dead matter, and then they absorb the resulting liquid filled with nutrients. So it's almost like they're eating sort of externally. And so oftentimes when you see, you know, things in the forest like a, you know, a dead, you know, tree, a tree that's fallen over, you'll see all these these mushrooms that are sprouting out of it. Realize the mushrooms are actually like the fruiting body of the fungi. And so internally what you're not seeing are all of the you can kind of think of them like roots that are that are invading the tree, digesting it chemically. These are decomposers. And one last picture just to illustrate the point. Okay, so there you go. So that was uh, the short lecture we had uh, on food webs, food chains, and some of their basic components. And I'll see you tomorrow for the activity.